Hello planty people, welcome back to my channel. I am Empress Eerie and this is my summer house plant tour. Although technically it's the second day of autumn in Australia, but we're gonna call this my summer house plant tour because I haven't done that yet and it counts, right? <laughs> We've had the weirdest summer in my city this year, I swear. It has been so cold, like not so cold, but it has been really cold. I usually, this city gets to, we have like 40 degree heat waves in that Celsius. Do the Googles if you don't know what the conversions are. Uh, but we usually get really, really, really hot, dry summers. I'm usually running the humidifier like crazy. I'm usually running the air conditioning. I'm usually dancing around in tiny little clothes and just having the best. I just love summer. I just love it so much. I have chronic pain and with my chronic pain, it just doesn't hurt as much when it's hot. I just, I don't suffer as badly. I get to wear my cute clothes. Like my skin doesn't hurt because I'm not wearing like layers and layers of warm stuff all the time, which messes with my chronic stuff. And I just, I think you get my point. <laughs> This year it's been wet and not really hot at all. And so I've been a little bit denial that it is the end of summer, which is probably why I haven't done my summer house plant toy yet because I've kind of wanted to pretend that it's not over, but it is. <laughs> so we're gonna go into getting around my plant collection in a minute. And I'm gonna be showing you what's doing well, what's maybe disappeared, what's new, I've moved um, a lot of plants around as well. So the last time you would have watched one of my house plant tours, all my plants were in my lounge room and now all the plants are in the dining room. So I have completely flipped all of the plants around. I've moved everything, some stuff growing really, really well. I've got some new babies to show you. So yeah, it's gonna be a long one. So settle in and get ready to look at some pretty plants with me. Now I'm not gonna say the names of all of the plants as per usual. I'm just gonna put them on the screen if I know it. If I don't know it, I'll tell you. If I do, I'll pop it up and yeah. So a lot of the stuff I have, I don't know this particular name of what it is. I just know the genus or the species that it belongs to. Uh, unfortunately, I am not 100% with all of them, but we're gonna have a look around. So enjoy my summer house plant tour and I'll do my autumn house plant tour towards the end of autumn so that at least there's a little bit of time between that one and this one. So yeah, let's get stuck into it. I may have to close the curtains behind me to get the light right depending on what's gonna work. So if it's not all beautiful and bright um, as we're looking through it, you'll know why. So let's see how the lighting goes and get stuck into it. So here it is, the start of the new plant corner that's pretty well established now, but it's still got some work to do. I'm actually thinking of moving that black shelf uh, to where this white shelf here is, the cube shelf on the end here, and moving the cube shelf down to there and putting grow lights in it. But I'm still not sure because I've only just kind of done this in the last few weeks and I'm still kind of figuring out what I'm doing with the space. But this is kind of a zoomed out, as best as I can, version of what it all looks like at the moment. Now let's zoom in and have a bit of a closer look. So, one thing that is very, very different from some of my previous houseplant tour is how beautiful and lush my calatheas are looking. <laughs> now some of them are doing quite well, some of them however are not doing as well as I would like and that's a bit of a sad moment for me because I've been really getting into the Clathias and prayer, 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 prayer plants since about August last year when I picked one up with a voucher for my birthday and kind of fell in love with them a little bit and now I just want so many of them. But I had a really brutal run with spider mites, um, which you may have watched some of my videos on. I ended up having to use a combination of a poison called killer mite and now I'm moving on to a systemic as well, which is a lot harsher than I would normally feel comfortable using, but it really, as you can see, like completely decimated my collection. This was a huge, big, mass, massively lush burly marks that now is what, 
that tiny little thing, like, you know, some of them were completely decimated. Um, let me just move this silver sword out of the way. And um, you can see here, this is the shelf of Clathias that I don't know if they will come back. <sighs> it's so upsetting and so sad because I was really loving them and now, like, that's got a leaf maybe popping up and that's got a leaf maybe popping up and then these four, I honestly don't know if they'll come back. Um, this medallion is down to one leaf, which looks terrible at the moment, but I don't want to cut that one leaf off because it's, like, the only leaf the plant has left. Uh, what else looks really bad now? My royal standard is not looking very royal. It's finally got two new leaves coming back, so I have a bit of hope for it in the end. My white fusion um, was destroyed, but it's actually growing back quite quickly. I'm very impressed with how it's looking at the moment, so that's good. It's still got a little bit of, like, damaged leaves, but um, everyone's doing all right. You know, could be worse, I suppose. Uh, I think this is either my Fatizia or my Orbit Folia. Won't be able to really tell till it gets a bit bigger. And it's now looking like that. So, as you can see, my Calatheas took a really hard hit thanks to spider mites. And I tell you, pay attention to your plants. Don't, like, take two weeks off from paying attention to your plants and make sure you inspect them closely, uh, especially if you get new plants. Make sure you check them for pests and don't just throw them into the collection and hope for the best because... Pretty sure that's what I did, and that's how I ended up with the brutal spider mite attack of uh, 2020. So I'm not going to put the names up of all these Calatheas. If there's anything that you in particular want to know about, send me a message on Instagram with a screenshot of the one that you're interested in, and I'll let you know if I know what it is. This one I do want to show you, though. It's um, a Maranta No ID uh, that is related to the Black Maranta, which in Australia is quite rare, and this one is quite worth quite a lot of money, and I got it in a trade for, like, some cuttings, and I just still can't believe it because what I traded, I, I couldn't trade the value of what this plant was worth, but the person I was trading with was just so friendly and lovely. They didn't really care, and they just wanted to share their amazing, beautiful plant. So I am so thrilled to have this little baby. It it had a few small roots when it went in, but not many. So I've kind of just left it in there. I'm going to remove this old leaf here and give it a bit of a chance to focus on growing big and strong. It's in a little bit of um, transplant shock at the moment. But yes, so that's the Calathea corner now. I've moved it into here. I'm hoping they're getting enough light there and I can subsidize with grow lights if I need to. I'm still figuring it out because I've just moved stuff over. Um, all right, so moving along into some of the hanging pots up there, we have um, one of the Hoyas. Pretty sure that's my Hoya. Is that a Crimson Queen or one of those? Um, then a you know, uh, heartleaf philodendron hanging here. And then down in this bottom pot is a string of turtles, peperomia. Uh, here is uh, my neon pothos in this pot. I also have some regular devil's ivy pothos as well. And I'm hoping this will grow down as nice as this one. So I've trailed this neon down around here for now. And I'm um, hoping to trail it all the way down eventually. Just switch to a different setting on my camera, so hopefully you'll be able to see against the window here better. So in here is my dark form Tritoscantia zebrina. Now this is a beautiful version. It's um, very dark and it's really, really purple, but the camera just does not pick up the color very well. It's absolutely stunning. Um, but it just, it doesn't photograph very well, which is really disappointing because it's absolutely beautiful and these stripes are really sparkly and the colours are really dark, dark purple and you can kind of see it on the back there, the back of the leaf. 
it it's beautiful, but it does not come up on camera very well. It's not very flattering on camera. So that's a bit of a shame. <laughs> In here, I have a little polka dot begonia that's just adorable. Not quite sure what type of wing polka dot begonia it is, but it's really cute. Here we have a strawberry begonia, which these are actually not a variety of begonia. Um popping the name up on the screen now uh, but they do get nicknamed uh the strawberry begonia because they have this sort of like red pinky coloring on the back and they do look and grow a bit like a strawberry in a planter they have these sort of runners that throw off and they're really cute um yeah so he's adorable and his little cranky face we have a regular boring Hoya, no idea what the variety is, some sort of Carnosa, I'm guessing just your regular sort of run of the mill. Here we have my uh, Monstera Variegata Standaliana. Is it Standaliana? I'm putting it on the screen now. <laughs> it's a little baby in Lekka that's about to pop out another new leaf that's kind of hard to see in there, but it is in there. <laughs> Hopefully that new leaf has some really cool variegation on it. That's been in Lekka for a good six months now before it finally gave me a new leaf. Up here is another form of Monstera. This is the, uh, it's a relative of the Addisoni. Uh, there's the screen on, name on the screen now. It's a beautiful vine plant. Catches the light really pretty. I really like this one. It's quite simple looking, not nearly as, you know, exciting as its whole filled Adesoni sibling. However, um, I really like it. I think it's it's a beautiful little kind of trailing plant. It just sits there lovely. I like it. Down here, um, I have some begonias. This one's not doing very well. I think it needs a fungal treatment. Um, it's not... It's not doing so great, which is a bit of a shame because it was doing really, really well. So I'm going to have to give that a fungal treatment and hopefully it will bounce back if I cut off the affected leaves. I'm going to have to just wait and see, I suppose. Like, yeah, she's not looking, she's not looking her best, which is a bit of a shame. Now there's a bit of dust on some of these from where I um, screwed in the the plants above so please excuse if you see little white dust they're not spider mites it's little white dust from where I screwed in the leaf the, the bolts above my head uh so I got a begonia macula maculata whatever it is there here we have a purple velvet plant which is growing beautifully like that color isn't it cute see that one's coming up purple that's nice so that's lovely um, back here is a relative of a bromeliad that my partner got me for Christmas. Cannot remember what it's called and I lost the tag. <laughs> so here is one of my pink princesses that's kind of dull at the moment. What is it with pink princesses? They either look amazing or they look like this. So I'm going to be repotting all of my pink princesses into one pot so hopefully I get a better looking plant in the end because... I'm kind of a bit tired of them looking a bit drab and a bit sad looking and I would really like a nice looking pink princess for a change. Uh, speaking of philodendrons, back here is my philodendron birkin which has just shot out this new leaf recently which is a stunner. I love having a birkin next to a window because of the way that it catches the light. Now you would have seen this birkin before, it is not looking its best. I underwatered it by accident and it lost a lot of leaves, so it is in recovery mode, but it's coming back now, which makes me very grateful. Uh, here is my regular Adesoni form. Um, it's been shooting out a lot of new leaves. It's doing really well at the moment. Uh, it's really liking this spot by the window. Everyone's really loving it in the dining room here. The light is much brighter and more ambient through the day, so it's all been very happy. Uh, this caladium being sold, so don't even look at it. <laughs> In here is my watermelon peperomia, which is gorgeous. Look at this big, beautiful leaf. It's been shooting out some new happy leaves lately. So this is a new leaf. That's a new leaf, which is why it still looks a bit funny, because it's not fully opened yet. Um, I think that's a new leaf. Oh, wow. I haven't looked at this one in a while because I just moved it. It's beautiful. Stunning. 
Oh, I love watermelon peps. This is the first time I've had one beer very healthy with me, so I'm quite glad. Uh, here is my Snow Queen Pothos. She is looking lush. She was hanging, and um, I realized she was growing up a little bit funny, and I couldn't see her stunning foliage, so I moved her to a shelf so I could look at her a little bit better. Uh, another spotty wing begonia. I'm pretty sure this is actually the same as the like other one on the shelf over there, so but it's cute. Uh, in here we have a variegated string of hearts and my uh, zigzag cactus, which was grown from this little cutting here. Uh, let me just up the light a bit more. Um, so this cutting here has sprouted off that baby and that baby's having a baby. So I'm um, hoping this will give me a nice full looking zigzag eventually because it's really cute. Moving along to the sloth with some, um, let's turn this brightness down again a little bit. Eh, there we go. So uh, the pink panther or pink princess. This is my fourth try with this one and I was having a lot of trouble with it. It needs to be right up against that window. It really does. I've had to turn that quite a few times. You can see how it's leaning. I've rotate that a couple of times a week so that it looks cute. And then when it turns around and faces the window again, so that one really, really needs a lot of light, but also can't have too much direct sun because it will burn. So it's one of those kind of middle ground pain in the butt plants, I've decided. But she's doing cute. She's doing all right. She could be worse. <laughs> she's not dead. I've had multiple die before, so, you know, she's not dead. So that's a good start. Here is my watermelon Dishidia, which is just doing so well at the moment. Um, it has grown so much and I haven't even repotted into my own soil yet. The soil it is in is some weird rock hard gross nursery soil and I really need to repot it but it's thriving and vine plants are always such a tricky one to repot so I've kind of avoided it for a while but um she's just gorgeous like isn't she cute? I love it. Such a beautiful little plant. So that's that one there. So that's that hanging shelf. And I think that's everyone here. So, yeah. This is a big silver sword that I got on discount at the hardware store because it was not in the best shape. Since then, it has given me this new leaf and it has a new leaf about to pop out. You can see its old leaves where it was damaged, why it was discounted. Poor baby. <laughs> it's got a bit of a long, awkward trunk in the middle here because of that damage. So I am considering chopping and propping in the middle here, but I'm going to wait a little bit longer until this top bit gets a bit bigger and fuller. Uh, we've got more prayer pant plant, prayer pants, prayer plants. Here is a form of a Rex begonia. I wouldn't know what type it was. I picked it up at the supermarket for $12. As a, I'm really going to keep trying with begonias until I get them right attempt. And I think I'm almost getting there. They, they can be temperamental, but I'm finding it's mainly a fungal thing. So I've started spraying my begonias with this spray bottle here is a, ro a mix of um, Yates Rose Shield. And I've started doing that every two weeks with my begonias, um, or at least close to every two weeks. And since doing that, this one, I haven't even repotted into nice soil yet. It's still in the disgusting supermarket soil. And it has given me all of these new leaves. And it's looking beautifully healthy. So I'm calling the Rose Shield a win. I learned about it on a Facebook group and very much recommend it for your begonias. And I've been using it on my Clathias as well. And they all seem to be doing really grateful, seem to be very grateful for it. Um, oh, there's, get dust off that. <laughs> so here we have a looking glass begonia, which is a hybrid of a Rex and a cane. It's very silver and sparkly, but it doesn't show on the camera very well. And yes, that is dust. Like I said last time, like before, that is dust in there from when I um, drilled a new hole in the roof above it and forgot to move the plants below me because I'm absent-minded. Well, folks, we've had a bit of an emergency situation. Um, while looking close at that begonia, thinking that it was just dust, it turns out that um, right next to it, all over this alocasia, 
It was not dust. Is that going to focus properly? I don't know if it is, but seriously, those are bloody spider mites. It is covered in spider mites. It is like... This is a super sad moment because this is the first alocasia I've managed to keep happy and I'm not sure how well you can see them there. There, see? I don't want to touch it because I don't want it to get on anything else that I'm planning on touching today. <sighs> I'm so upset because this plant was right next to a whole bunch of other stuff and now it's going to have to get... I already had to repot it anyway, but now I'm going to have to repot it, hose it down, spray it, isolate it. And alocasias aren't... They're pretty sensitive... So I don't know how well it's going to take this roughhouse treatment that it is about to receive. But seriously, are you serious right now? <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. So this was over here in this spot right here. Now I'm going to have to double check that on this looking glass begonia here, what I thought was dust is actually dust so um i honestly don't know hey whatever it is it's not looking good it's not looking good it's really not looking good so i'm going to treat that as well now because it was literally underneath it so i'm also going to do that and then it was also right next to my Monstera Dubaya, which is one of my precious babies. So that's now got me very concerned that my Dubaya is going to be infested. So I'm going to have to spray that down as well. So that's really super annoying. And it was right next to just kind of literally everything else and really not that far from my brand new baby. So this is my stunning new Monstera variegat, um, high constellation variegated Monstera deliciosa, which as you can see is a stunning specimen. And I'm not going to be touching anything now because I'm really scared of spreading mites around. So I'm sorry that you won't be able to get a proper view of things because I'm not going to be touching them. You're just going to have to kind of look. Uh, but yes, so this is a five leaf cutting that I managed to get on Facebook, which I am just super in love with come around here and see that leaf look at that leaf isn't it beautiful um so this cutting came with aerial roots so i potted it straight away into a pot it's got some moss on top seems to be doing well it's just plodding along at the moment it hasn't really changed since i got it um there's another leaf hiding around the corner there and it is just absolutely gorgeous the variegation just is like look at it such a babe Ugh, such a babe. In love with her. Uh, hiding underneath her is a... Um, I'm going to have to lift just up with a tiny finger. Is a Rhapsodophora tetrasperma. It's doing really well. It's my original one. I have another one of these now uh, that was a gift. And this is my OG one that is now quite large and doing really well. Um, this is a watermelon something. I cannot remember the name, so I'll try and pop it up on screen now if I can find what it is. It's some sort of vine, and it's um, really pretty. It's got this really lovely foliage that's quite glittery, and it grows quite fast. It's really pretty. I appreciate that one. Really enjoying that one. Um, what else is here? What else is here? So there's my another normal monster down here. It's quite cute. Uh, Ficus Elastica, I think that's what this one is here. This, oh, this is also going to have to get inspected for spider mites. Hiding under there is a tiny little micans. I'm going to be putting that philodendron micans up into this hanging planter at some point soon though, so it won't stay in that little pot forever. Now on this shelf, here is my Hoya Kerry. This Hoya Kerry is recovering really, really, really well after being in really bad shape when it was posted to me. So I'm really happy to see it bouncing back. It's got four or five new leaves. It's starting to grow again after um, being so damaged when it arrived. So I'm very thankful for that. A new uh, red watermelon peperomia, uh, Fatona, Silver Sword, my Oxalaxis, Triangularis, 
My purple shamrock is looking beautiful right now. I'm very happy with how it's looking. One of my new string of turtles. I don't think this string of turtles would have been in my past houseplant video. So this one is a new string of turtles that you would have seen in my string of turtles video if you watched that one specifically. This is my um, peperomia. Oop. Yep, yep. Uh, I can't remember the full name of this one, but it is huge. So I'll put that on the screen. It's a variegated peperomia. E Oops, why did I pick it up? Regrets. So it is huge at the moment. It was hanging, and I'm probably going to have to hang it again because it's ginormous. Uh, in here is a whole bunch of propagation stuff. If you watch my uh, Water Baby Wednesday videos, you'll know more about all of these. Some Hoyas in Lekka, we've got some String of Turtle babies, we've got some Peperomia babies. Now we're going to go up. Up uh, here, this is my Hoya compactor inside Barragata. It's doing beautifully. I have cut a little bit off this for some trades, so she's looking probably smaller than you would have seen her last, but she's healthy and happy, so that's good. She's doing well. don't know how good a picture I can get because I'm short. Spin and look pretty. Up here we have a philodendron of some variety. It's doing well, spitting out new leaves, very happy. Um, another begonia uh, spotty maculata, I think it is. Now this one, <laughs> you guys might remember this one, you peeps might remember this one, as me thinking this was a mandula pothos. Turns out she ain't. She's a regular old snow queen. But you know what? She's beautiful and I love her and I don't don't even care that she's a basic bitch. One day I'll get a Minjula though. I don't I don't have one yet, but I will, will get one. If anyone wants to give me one, I'm open to it. String of hearts. Uh, these are all grown from propagations and tiny cuttings and they're all doing very beautifully now. Uh, this Maranta is the Maranta that basically got me into prayer plants and calatheas. And as you can see, she is lush and doing beautifully. I did pot in another full-size one that a friend of mine gave me to recover before I popped that in. So I did put that in here. And um, so it's two plants in there now. But the second plant's kind of what's filling out this section. So this bit here. And then all of these branches here is the original plant. So that's looking lush. And I'm really, really thrilled with how well... That one's going along. It's one of my favourites. It's just beautiful. It doesn't have its full glory there. I do need to find a way of having it kind of take up more space. But she's wedged in there at the moment. But she was right next to the allocation with spider mites. Ah! Oh, man. I'm so not cool right now about that. Anyway, we're going up. I try to scan to your whatever it is. The pretty cute pinky one. This was not doing really well until I hung it up here. And since I've hung it up here, it's doing beautifully. It's been really happy. Lots of gorgeous new growth. So that's great. This has grown from a tidy cutting as well. Uh, my Brazil that is still shooting out pretty much nothing but neon leaves, which is a fun time. Like, I got a bit of green on that. Cool. Awesome. Get your act together. <laughs> My regular neon pothos, heart leaf pothos, this one's doing beautifully. I did cut a big branch of this off for a trade recently, so which is why you'll also be like, didn't that have a big long tendril? But I kind of like it because instead of having a big long bit hanging down now, it's this really beautiful little compact hanging plant and it's going to grow out a little bit more evenly long term. Here is a devil's ivy that I rescued from... Uh, woolies for a few dollars and it wasn't in very good shape and now it is like stunning and long and shooting out lots of new vines so that's very happy. So I think that's everyone in the dining room area here so let's look at the rest of the house. Okay so in a mad panic I have uh just thought I'd let you know what I've done next so people aren't sitting there going what the spider mites? So spider mites hate, hate humidity, so I've moved the humidifier over to shoot a lot of humidity, like I've got it set to 85%, um, onto the affected area, so hopefully it doesn't encourage them to have spread to anything else. 
I've also gone through and sprayed everybody with Rose Shield, which isn't 100% effective against spider mites. So later tonight, I'm also going to come through with a round of hydrogen peroxide alcohol mix on a low strength. And then I've also gone through and treated everyone with a little bit of this directly into the soil um, so that uh, hopefully the only plant that's going to have been affected by the spider mites is the alocasia. And it may have come with that. It's not. Uh, it's a fairly new plant that I got from Bunnings about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. So, yeah, it, it looked fine, but it may not have been. So I'm going to have to do a really close inspection of everybody in this area, but I'm not going to do that right now. I just thought I'd tell you what I've done as my next process to hopefully combat the spider mites. So I've sprayed the Dubai, I've sprayed by, um, this one, and I've treated them all with the pests, and then I'm going to have to closely inspect everyone with a torch when it's a little bit darker in here. So, yeah. That's what I've done regarding the alocasia spider mite situation. So before I move out of the dining room area into other parts of the house, these are two new babies that uh, haven't been fully inspected yet, so haven't been put into the collection because I need to inspect. There are no other spider mites that I'm bringing into the house. Uh, this is a regular old, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, stromanthe. That is it right there. It's got this really pretty foliage on top and then the underside is this amazing red color. So that's gorgeous. Um, I did go to the hardware store this morning because they had Syngonium White Fantasies for really cheap and then they all got bought out real quick. So unfortunately I didn't get one of the Syngoniums but I did get this beauty and then when I got home this came in the mail. Now this one is absolutely gorgeous. It's a little bit damaged and a little bit dirty because the soil went everywhere in there. So I'm going to have to take it out and wash it anyway. So this is a Calathea Maui Queen, I think it is called. I will pop it on the screen. And um, just isn't it beautiful? Those markings are so cool. And then the undersides are purple. Now this I think is all sand from the pot tipping upside down and spilling everywhere. I'm going to have to wash it to be sure. It could be spider mites, but it does feel like sand. Like, And the pot was upside down when it um, arrived on the doorstep, even though they had written nicely to please keep up one way. Australia Post, do not listen. But it's just pretty. So pretty. So these are two new babies that will go into the Calathea Corner, Calathea Corner when they are inspected and ready to go. In the kitchen, we've got the propagation station, which you can see full details of on Water Baby Wednesday videos. I've just recorded one today as well. In here is some Monstera. You would have seen this in a pot in previous videos. But she got a bit leggy and weird, so I head chopped her and she's ready to be potted up in a while. She's got some roots there. Now these are my begonias, which I have moved all my begonias to self-watering pots and they're loving it. This was down to nothing and now has given out two new healthy leaves. This was down to one scabby leaf and has shot out these two beauties. This was in really bad shape, has given me new leaves since. This one's got some new leaves sprouting, but you can't really see them very well. And then this Escargo on the end was down to a stump and now has some fresh leaves as well. So that's making me so happy because I do love Rex begonias, but they really don't like me very much. So I'm trying to work it out and self-watering pot seems to be going well for them so far. So that's been a nice surprise. I wasn't sure how well they would go because they can be fussy little divas and the likes, but uh, they seem to be doing good. And then on the end here in this tiny little one, if I can reach the camera, that is a baby jelly jam that my lovely friend gave me and it's got roots but it's not doing anything else at the moment so it's not very interesting. And then recently hung up in the kitchen is another regular Hoya Canosa. It's just a, a, a regular pretty green one. Nothing super exciting about it but hopefully it'll give me some pretty flowers one day. Now this monstera does not live here but it is currently just in isolation. It also had spider mites. So it's in ISO now until I am 100% sure it's all good. So it's over here in the lounge room by the window by itself. But it does have a fresh new leaf. So that new leaf's come out happy and healthy. I think it has another baby leaf, yeah, under here. Which has come out good as well. 
Um, it had two new leaves that were completely spider mite infested, and that's how I discovered it had mites. Um, it has got a bit of damage to the underside of some of its leaves, thanks to the spider mites, but I can't see any fresh ones, so that's a good sign so far. Hello, Murphy. How you doing, buddy? Hey. How you doing? <laughs> Now the plants in the lounge room, we're not getting nearly enough light except for the plants on the window here. So all the ones on the window here are still here and they're all doing well. We've got these on the end. Everyone here is doing good. Got uh, variegated angel tears doing well. Uh, variegated elephant bush. Covered in little baby spiders, but they're baby spiders, not spider mites. So I'm cool with that. We got my Frida head peperomia there that's doing beautiful. Uh, this string of hearts is happy. This little, uh, I think it's either, it's a little type of Hoya, but I cannot remember the type of Hoya that it is. But it's a very cute little one and it's got some brand new leaves popping out. A string of pearls that's thriving. One of my OG string of pearls, that one. Uh, my Hoyo Crinkle, I wasn't sure how well it was doing, and then I spun it around and realized it had all these new leaves here, including one with a bit of a splash on it, which is really cool. I love a bit of a silver splash. Like, isn't it pretty? So that's my cute little Hoyo Crinkle. Uh, this uh, Dwarf Sansevieria, which aren't Sansevieria anymore, I know, they're not the same family, but it was originally just one floret, and it has shot up another baby. I repot these zag zagu, whatever they're called, cactuses into a smaller pot. I actually had them in way too big a pot, and since then they've grown heaps more because they're not trying to fill out the pot with, with root system. Um, empty frizzle sizzle, which hopefully will come back in winter. I'm really not into dormant plants, hey? It's just they do my head in. Now the tritoscantia, my, uh, what is it? Quicksilver tritoscantia. It wasn't doing great, so I moved it into a sunnier corner and it's bounced right back. Here is a Peperomio, Peperomio Rosso, which was grown from a single leaf cutting. And now look at it. Super happy, big, lush plant. Really happy with that one. You can still see the original leaf that was propagated hiding in under there. A uh, Peperomio Midnight, which was gifted to me from a friend, which is doing beautifully in this long kind of lanky, awkward little way. And then I've got my booby cactus. Now, I had some problems with my booby cactus also having spider mites, so I'm gonna have to do another inspection of that today and another spray down. Uh, Peperomia banda, whatever it is. Also grown from a single leaf, doing really well. Still in the lounge room though is this big Janet Craig, I think it's called. I don't know, some sort of palmy thing. It's doing beautifully. It's given me heaps of new leaves. It's doing lovely. It looks nice catching the light there. Now this big snake plant, I was about to give up hope on because it was looking kind of like, I don't know, ugh, and sad. And I was about to give up hope on it and kind of be like, I'm done with you. And then it shot out a little baby. Look. So I forgive it now. Um, for being kind of ugly, so I tied a string around it to hold it up because it was falling over in a really kind of awkward way and not looking cute at all. So uh, she's she's doing better now with with her cute little baby. So yeah, thankfully that little baby is is popping up and should look nice and lush soon. Next, I am in uh, the toilet room down the other end of the house, and these are the shelves that I got. I got these shelves on a local buy nothing group. And I love them in here. They're so fun, they're so cute. They can fit, you know, toilet paper and spare things in them really well. And they fit plants. <laughs> so things in here are doing really lush. Uh, this Syngonium Neon is huge. It just doesn't look it kind of hidden up on the shelf there. I wanna find another spot for it um, because it's really pink and hold on, you can't, Okay, so I turned that overhead light off so you can see the color a bit better. And it sort of worked, I don't know. So it's this beautiful pink that isn't really showing on the camera very well. There we go, I changed the settings a bit to try and get more of that pink. And it, it's just looking kind of gray, isn't it? That's a bit of a shame. It is a beautiful lush pink and it's such a big plant. Like, 
it's so good. I love it. And it's doing really, really well in here. So I'm just going to leave it kind of shoved awkwardly in the shelf there. <laughs> Up here is my big, beautiful beast of a spider plant. She is just one of my favorites. I really cannot capture her all in one frame because she is so big. Um, and I love her. So this is actually a combination of a curly spider plant and a spiky spider plant. So that's what give it kind of, gives it kind of this really unique look because it's got a curly ribbon and a normal spiky. So the baby is coming off rather spiky ones at the moment. I don't know how often the curly ribbon ones gives off babies, but at the moment it isn't. And, and that's just my big mixed spider plant pot, which is just beautiful. Like how lush is it? I really want to hang it up somewhere and have her hanging just on her own glory, but she's very happy there at the moment, so I don't want to move her too much. So here is my other Snow Queen. This was propagated from two cuttings. One cutting had a half moon tendency and one cutting was just a regular speckle. So it'll be cool to see them all grow out together with this kind of half moon tendency versus uh, the regular one. And then up here we have another Hoya, which I don't re I don't know, again, the variety. You would have seen this one have a big long tendril along here. I cut that again for propagation. All these top leaves are all new, which are beautiful. This big, beautiful leaf. Look at the splash. So cute. Love it. And uh, go up there without squashing the leaf. Here is a red vein Maranta. Now, this was two tiny cuttings that my darling friend Gem gave me. And since then, it has spat out like six new leaves. This being, this one here being the newest leaf, which is about the size of my palm, which is just beautiful. And it's a babe. And it started growing roots out the bottom of its pot. So I don't know how soon I'm going to have to repot that one, but it looks like it's trying to escape a little bit. Stunning. Love it. The Red Brain Miranda is probably one of my favorites. I just... I adore the color and the pattern and it's so trippy how it closes. I just love them. They're so great. Ah, uh, what else have we got in here? We've got a little Dishidia. I don't know if I'm saying that right or if people are laughing at me, but you know, anyway, <laughs> it's a really cute one. These gorgeous little leaves. This has grown heaps since I've got it as well. It's doing beautifully. It's tendrils growing nice and long. So I'm loving that one. This peperomia, I swear, is the slowest growing plant I have. It has only had like four leaves the whole time I've had it. And it is quite a few years old now. But she's variegated and she's cute. So she can just keep doing her thing. That's fine. Uh, this is my, I think it's a satin pothos. But I really don't know. There's quite a few pothos that are of a similar vein when it comes to this type. So I'm really not quite sure which one it is. If you know... Tell me below. It's just opened that new leaf there and has a new leaf popping up. This was a single leaf rooted cutting that I propagated in water for so long and I really just was looking at it going, are you ever going to grow another leaf? And then it spat out two new leaves in like a month and a half and now it has a new leaf on the way. So I guess it showed me, right? And then lastly in the toilet room here, we have another Rhapsodophora tetrasperma. And this one is one that my beautiful partner got me for Christmas and it's so cute. One of my favorite plants and this one's growth pattern is adorable. Like, look at it. It's super cute. It's spitting out new leaves so quickly as well. It has doubled in size since I got it since Christmas. So that one lives up in the corner here, but I do want to put it somewhere where I can see the top of the foliage a bit better because looking at it from the top is a little bit more enjoyable than looking at it from the side. Uh, but soon it's going to be getting cold and everything in here is going to have to move. Not everything, but a lot of things in here are going to have to move because this room gets pretty much as cold as outside gets. And some of the tropical plants in here really are not going to be able to handle living in here over um, winter. So they're going to have to get moved out into the dining room or the lounge room. So I'm going to deal with that when the temperatures start to drop. But at the moment, we're doing okay. So... We'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but for now, this is the toilet room, and I this is ironically one of my favorite spaces, but you know, only see it when you go pee. Go figure. 
So we're in the bathroom now, and here is a Monstera having a bath. She needed a really big drink, and so she's having a bath at the moment. You can tell she's a little floppy. She's a little thirsty. Uh, this is my one of my other many Monsteras, and she's doing well. She's just hanging out in her lecker basket in the bathtub. <laughs> Now, also in the bathroom is my gigantic uh, Green Hill Tritoscantia, which is just, it's just a beast. I can't get over how much bigger and bigger and bigger this plant just keeps getting. You can't really, come on, light, can, there we go, that's better. So it is just huge. It, like, look at it. Absolute babe. It needs a bit of a water, that's why the colour looks a little bit faded, but also the colour doesn't come up very well on the camera, unfortunately. It's just one of those things with that one. But this is the best looking Green Hill Tritoscantia I've seen. Not to like blow my own whistle, but I've seen a few people have them around and they just don't look this lush. So I feel very proud that mine is looking this happy and full and long and big leafed. And then next to it I have uh, Tritoscantia Zambrina which has decided to face the other way and you can't really see it very well. Uh, it's only just been put in here, but it's already doing really well. Um, up here is a philodendron in water, which I really need to pot into a pot. And then I have a pothos in the corner, which I thought was a regular golden pothos, but I think it's actually a green jade pothos because it has not given any gold on any of the leaves, they've all come out green, which I'm not mad about because that was one pothos I actually didn't have. And then I have this uh, red longleaf philodendron in water and it is so ready to be put in a pot, it's not even funny, but I've just kind of neglected it a little bit and it has been going bananas. So she has so many leaves in there that really need to be gotten out of there <laughs> and a few new leaves opening on the end of the stem. So it is my mission at some point to put her in a nice hanging pot and just let her kind of go rogue in a hanging pot. So at the last little part of the video now, which is the bedroom, and we have this little variegated cactus, which is shooting off the tiniest little flowers that I really can't capture on film because they're just so minuscule. Like, and I am not putting my hand right up to it because that is a recipe for disaster. So hopefully you can kind of see there. Um, then I have my variegated string of pearls on the bedroom shelf as well. This is actually doing really well. I'm really surprised. I'll see if I can get some better footage for you. Is that showing? I don't know how well it's showing them, unfortunately. But there are quite a lot of white pearls in there at the moment. Um, it's doing really well. There's some drapery happening. There's some variegated in the drapery, like there. Look, she's so pretty. So this is one of my favorites as well. I absolutely adore this. I'm trying to get, oh, there, look at that white. Now you can see it. I was trying to get away where you could actually see it in the right light. So that's some of the variegation on the pearls. It's a very happy little pearl plant. And I've got some variegation in my tendrils as well. These don't usually hold variegation very well, so I'm very impressed with how well this one's plodding along. Then just above her on the shelf, I have a little bear paw, which is thriving. It's doing really well, the fuzzy little cutie little bear paw and then just down from them we have little fox planters now my other two little fox planters don't have anything in them at the moment but these two is a string of beans which is doing really well um this has like gotten quite big since i've put it in here and then a string of pearls which has been in og like this is one of the og plants i put in these planters and it's doing really well. It's got some big fat pearls on top and then some beautiful drapery happening. She's gotten quite long now. Uh, it's really cute and very happy with how that's doing. So that's great to see. Super happy with that one. Beautiful little fox planters. Aren't they cute? The end of the shelf, which I think is the last plant to look at, is my green rose Aeonium, which is in dormancy at the moment. So... That'll start growing again in winter. It's a winter grower, not a summer grower. So in summer, it does this cute little rose thing. Oh, whoa, accidental zoom in there, my bad. 
tried to slightly adjust the light and I ended up accidentally zooming in. So that's it looking beautiful, all cute and rosy. So in winter it will open up and start growing again. It's going to look like this for a little bit longer. Funny little uh, summer dormant winter grower. I do have a few of my indoor plants living out on my porch at the moment uh, where they're enjoying a little bit more sun and stuff. So this alocasia has shot out this new leaf since being out here. This was its original leaf. It's doing well. This one wasn't doing very well, so I've put it out here hoping it will come back to life. Uh, my bird of paradise is living out here at the moment because they do love a lot of sun and it's doing well. That's a new leaf on her. And then she has... A new sprout coming up. This Hoya has been loving out here. This whole vine has grown while it has been living out here, so it's really loving life. And I'm hoping to leave it out here over winter because uh, I've had friends say that they just leave theirs out in winter and it doesn't get frost up here, so that would be my only concern about it. And, yeah... This was another little sense of area snake plant that I was going to give up hope on and then it gave me a baby as well. So I've forgiven it <laughs> and um, it's still flopped over, which is kind of weird. So it's, it's, it's watered enough. I've given it plenty of water. It's just decided that it's just looking like this and giving new babies at the same time. So you do you, girl. What ifs? So that's my summer houseplant tour for 2021 slash 2020. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry about the little spider mite drama in the middle, but hashtag real life. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Congratulations if you made it all the way to the end. I will do a little bit of you know a B roll of just some nice close ups of some of these my favorite plants. And so if you want to keep watching, you'll see a little bit of like nice, close, zoomy close up of some of my favorite babies. Otherwise, I will say goodbye now and thank you for watching. Please keep growing like your plants and please like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram and follow me on Facebook and, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and keep watching if you want to just see some pretty close ups of my plants to pretty music. Bye.